Can everybody hear my voice? Can you all see the screen that says week four feedback? Um, somebody post in chat just to confirm. Yeah, so we're all good. Hey, welcome back. This is Daryl. And this is week four. This is the end of the class. I'm sure this month has gone by for you guys in a hurry. But we're here in the very last week. And uh, the intense part is all down. You guys, uh, you, 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 you climbed the mountain, you created your presentation. And this week, we're going to make the presentation better. This week is all about feedback. So uh, everybody stepped up and turned in their presentation. And I had a full day. And I, I got them all uh, critiqued. So I've got feedback for everybody. You should be able to go uh, back to the page. And there should be audio feedback for you uh, of my critique of, of suggestions for how to make this better. And uh, anybody that wants to uh, 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 discuss the feedback or get more information, you know, I'll be around all week uh, and so forth. But uh, this is the week in which you get to pause and reconsider what you've done. You guys did a lot of work this week, last week. You got your presentations in. And hopefully uh, most of you also posted them in the 3.3 discussion board. Because in addition to getting feedback from me, there is the possibility, I can't guarantee it, but there, there's the possibility of getting feedback from your classmates. If you post in the discussion board, then uh, other students are encouraged to give you feedback. We can't force that to happen, so it's all voluntary. Uh, and the best way to make it happen is for you to participate yourself, meaning you should step up and give others feedback, and therefore people will feel obligated to do the same for you in, in turn. Uh, the more feedback you have on your work, the better off you are. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about feedback this week. The reading is on feedback. There's one final chapter that we want you to read, the last chapter in Resonate, and it uh, rightly is about feedback. So uh, we're going to finish off uh, Nancy Duarte and say goodbye to her. But I hope that you take her lessons with you as you go forward, that you think about the method she's put together for you to make presentations, the idea to get your uh, planning done first, to think about what you want to say before you start making slides. Um, I think that this method is useful. I, I, I'm really pleased with the work that got turned in this week. This, uh, this week. So I think you are learning those lessons. I think it will make you better presenters, better artists as you go forward. You're going to be able to put your point of view forward. Um, so Nancy has done her work. She wants to make you make better, stronger presentations because she wants you to change the world. And she knows it's not easy and that the better you can communicate your words, the better off you are. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, dear. Um, Someone tweet, if someone put in the chat, if you can hear me. The audio is fine, and you hear me. Who cannot hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. Just a second. Type here if you cannot hear. Putting this in the chat. So when I say if you can't hear and your audio is working, that is a useless command on my part but maybe they can read it. Um, there may be folks for, for whom uh, their audio is not working, but uh, it seems like the rest of you are going. So I'm gonna continue. Um, always worried that the internet is going to uh, go haywire on us. Uh, the world is crazy. Uh, for the last two years, it's been crazy weather and now it's, it's crazy viruses. So uh, I don't trust nothing anymore. And uh, I just work in paranoid fashion, I always, I'm backing up my work every 10 minutes and uh, uh, I'm assuming everything's gonna blow up when I touch it. Um, Jonathan 
cannot uh... Jonathan I've unmuted your mic can you speak all right well, we're, we're gonna stop troubleshooting and just keep going uh, the folks for whom you can uh, hear um, we're recording this and therefore uh, you should be able to uh, listen back if, if you're having trouble but uh, Nancy Duarte wants you to go forth and make great presentations. Take her lessons, take them and, and make great presentations. So that's what I hope for you all to carry with you as you come out of this class. So um, I'm not gonna lecture long today. Uh, I wanna just spend time helping people fix things or uh, talking with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, if, if you want it. Um, so there are, um, two activities this week there's there's the the session board continues from last week but again it's not something that you have to part uh that, that you have to um, um participate in so that's purely voluntary but there is an assignment 4.3 in which we want to have you uh have experience of uh uh giving feedback and so uh i'm going to uh dump out of here real quick and go to the um, assignment. Assignment 4.3 is a written assignment. It's a little bit like week one's TED Talk assignment. What it is, if you go to the instructions, you have to download these instructions. And so everybody remember to download the PDF and look at it. And if we look at the PDF, on page two are three different links from YouTube of student projects. These are first drafts from students that are pretty good, but not great. They can be improved. And so we want you to watch all three of them and pick one. You only have to do one, but I want you to pick one, and I want you to write in a paper giving, saying what you like about it and giving that student useful feedback. Now, useful feedback is feedback that can be acted upon. So. Um, some of the things you want to do in, in, in giving good feedback is to be specific. You don't want to just say, I don't like this. If you don't like it, suggest an alternative. You, if, don't just say your fonts are bad. Just say your fonts are thin. I don't think they can be read from a distance. I suggest you use a thicker font or I suggest you use Futura. Uh, but give specific suggestions. So when you're giving someone feedback, make sure that the person you're giving advice to has the ability to understand what it is that you're saying and give them alternatives for ways to change or fix it. Uh, that's useful feedback. So we want you to watch all three of these student presentations to pick one of them and in a written piece, and we're only looking as a short piece, this is only looking for one or two paragraphs here. I want you to tell me what you like about the presentation, what you didn't like about it, and I want you to offer some useful feedback to the student. There's some other questions here. Last week we talked about the three pillars of, of uh, conversation and we want you to ask, when, when you look at these presentations, I want you to, to, to tell me, are they appealing to ethos, pathos, or logos? So I want you to practice you know, using that skill. And then uh, the final thing in this uh, short piece is step two, um, uh, step three, after your analysis, after you've given feedback on the one student film that you've chosen, uh, add a final paragraph reflecting upon your thoughts about feedback. How does feedback inform your own process? So I want you to be reflective about how you use feedback and how it might help you going forward. So this is a text document. I don't need you to add visuals if you don't want. Uh, it's really not necessary. I don't need you to uh, spend a lot of time writing on it. Uh, this is something that you should be able to get done very quickly. Turn it in as a text file. You can even turn it in as a message in the feedback box uh, for 4.3 if you like. But uh, it really shouldn't take a lot of time. But it, it will be a chance for all of you to engage in giving someone feedback. And that's uh, a skill that you all need to learn, how to give and to receive feedback. Now, in receiving feedback, I've given you all feedback. Does that mean you have to do it? No. Uh, even though I'm giving you my opinion of saying, I think you should do this or I think you should do that, it's still just suggestions. 
this is your project and your responsibility in dealing with received feedback is that you need to consider it, not that you have to do it. Once you've considered it, you think, well, this is a good idea or I might try it, then you could implement it. But you might also think about it and decide, no, I'm right uh, to begin with and override it. No one is asking, no one is telling you you have to follow feedback. But it is um, proper protocol if someone is giving you feedback to listen to it completely. Uh, you know, don't be defensive about it. Take it all in as useful information. And then part of your process is to consider whether or not this feedback is helpful to you and you can go forward from there. So uh, that's what I want you to do in terms of the final project. Uh, 4.3 is your, choice, your chance to give feedback to someone else. So you'll be doing that with the three, uh, uh, the three YouTube videos that are, that are here. Uh, they've all been posted to YouTube. Uh, if I go to one, you'll just see very, very typically. My name is Louis Soto. And at the age of 15, I begin one of the And all three uh, presentations are sort of different in type, so you'll be able to choose among different uh, sorts of presentations. Uh, so just choose one of them, the one that speaks to you, and uh, you know, make sure you're giving that student some advice. Uh, so 4.3 is due on Sunday, and 4.4 is due on Sunday. So 4.4 is the revised version of your presentation. Um, you cannot turn in exactly the same presentation that you turned in on 3.4. You cannot turn in 3.4 a second time. You have to change it in some regard. So even if I told you that it was perfect and I can't think of anything for you to change, you still have to change it. You have to add something, subtract something, make, uh, give it a little bit more, but you have to uh, um, do alter the file in some regard. And so as you're turning in 4.4, there are a couple of things we want you to do in addition to turning in the file. One is that uh, the rule for the final presentation, and it has to be self-running. Those of you that worked in PowerPoint and turned in PowerPoint files, uh, if your PowerPoint was set up so that I had to click to advance slides or click to engage audio. You have to make the final version self-running. We want to be able to just open the file and it will run from beginning to end all by itself. It's still okay to turn in a PowerPoint file as your final version, but it has to be a self-running PowerPoint. It cannot be one that you click to advance. And again, everybody should know that you have to have audio. If you didn't have audio in your first presentation, you've got to get that audio in place for the final version. And um, in addition, we recommend that as a, um, a way of, of, of making it even better and finalizing it, that you export the project as a movie. You don't have to, it's not absolutely necessary, but you can do this, you do this automatically from Adobe uh, uh, Spark. Spark gives you an MPEG-4 file, you guys have been turning in those MPEG-4 files to me. Uh, one of the things we suggest in 4.4 is that you up actually upload it to YouTube. Everybody who has a Google account has free space on YouTube to put up any videos they want. And as a student, it's a really good idea to take your final projects, your final versions of things that you've been working on and post them to YouTube. You don't have to share them with everybody. You can actually keep things private if you don't want to share them. But uh, one of the things is if you're making a movie, sometimes those movies are really big. I think a lot of you have experienced that in trying to upload your file to me uh, and, you know, at, at midnight and you're having trouble. And if it's a three or 400 megabyte file, you know, that can be a difficulty. And it's going to continue to be a difficulty to share that file with everyone. So a great thing about putting your, your finished version on YouTube is you upload it to YouTube. It's stored on their servers. So you're not paying anything for it. But then when you do want to share that file with anyone, it's simply a matter of, of texting them, faxing them, uh, or uh, you know, messaging them a link. You're not sending any media around. You don't have to do a lot of uploading or downloading. Yeah, you're just simple sending a link to the file on YouTube. So it's an easy way to share your work with people. So that's a great thing to do in finishing it. And as a full sales student, uh, it's a great way of archiving your work. 
uh, instead of keeping everything on your laptop or, or whatnot as you go forward, as you finish a class and you have finished work, you can upload that uh, finished project to YouTube and keep it archived there and always have access to it if you need it, but you don't have to necessarily keep it on your own machine. And the final thing we're looking for you to do with 4.4 is to tell us a change, give us what we're calling a changes list. So whatever changes you've decided to make, and these are your decisions, you, you know, you're, you're going to base it off feedback from me, you're going to base it off feedback from other students. You probably have your own list of changes that you're thinking of making or things that you wanted to do, but the deadline came around and you didn't get it done yet. So, you know, include that stuff in, in uh, the feedback that you want. You can give feedback to yourself. But when you decide what it is you're actually going to do to 4.4 to make it changed and improved from 3.4, then we also want you to create what we're calling a changes list, which is a short text document just saying what you did and didn't change. So turn in that uh, changes list with us. Uh, you do not have, we do not want it included in the presentation itself, but it can be uh, uploaded as a separate text file. It can be put in the feedback uh, uh, message box in 4.4. That's a great way to let me know. But if you just send us that short text file of saying what you changed, uh, you know, that's really helpful to us as we're going through and comparing uh, your 3.4 version with your 4.4 version. Um, and again, all of this is due on Sunday. You have all week to work on it. If you need more time, let me know ahead of time of Sunday and we can extend that deadline. Uh, but uh, I think everyone's in pretty good shape and everyone's got all week to make their changes. So most of you shouldn't have any problem getting this done uh, by Sunday night. And if you can finish it a little bit early, Go ahead and turn it in. That gives you a free weekend where you don't have to think about anything. Uh, and, and so that's the week four activities, and that concludes the class. The class ends Sunday at midnight here on uh, Eastern time. And uh, you turn in your work. If you need to have an extension, uh, I will give it, you an extension, but most of you should be done with this class by Sunday. There's an additional thing we're asking you to do, and we want you to save this to last. It's called portfolio competency self-reflection. And it's basically uh, you evaluating yourself about what did you expect out of this class? How do you think you did? What do you think you got out of it? What could we make, do to make it better? It's uh, one of those sort of uh, uh, evaluations that help us to improve the class as we go forward. And uh, it's not for a grade. We do ask you to fill it out, but uh, it, it, it's not that important. Uh, it's not that uh, it's not something that you do for a grade. So uh, save this to last till you've had the full experience of this class and then tell us what you think about the class. Um, so what's going to happen at midnight is that uh, the deadlines for this class will close. You'll still be able to access this class for about two more weeks. So if you want to come in and see what your grades for let, uh, the final week are, you can come in after this class closes. Uh, and if you have some late work that you had to turn in, you know, you have extra time to turn that in, et cetera. But somewhere about two weeks into your next class, you'll lose access to this class. So as you go forward, you're not always accessing every single class. You're only accessing the current class that you have and the previous class you had for about a week or two. So what's also gonna happen Sunday at midnight is a minute after that at 12.01 a.m. on Monday, your next class is gonna open up. Uh, for most of you, your next class is called uh, PYP, the Psychology of Play. Uh, it's a really cool class that talks about work, play balance, and mental processes and things with like mind games where people are playing poker or out, out guessing each other or whatnot. So it's a lot of psychology, but it has to do with uh, um, how people... Uh, use play to do psychological work. And it also has to do with getting your life in balance. So those of you who felt stressed this week, this month, and felt like you need a little help with time management, that class is gonna be really helpful with that, that it really talks about dividing your time up into, uh, you know, time to uh, study, time to work, time to play. Uh, maybe you will sleep and eat in there a little bit somewhere. But uh, that class is going to open up as soon as this one does. And you'll access that class through the uh, Full Sail One 
portal that you first access this class from. So that's the way the system works. As soon as one class ends, another begins. And because of that almost relentlessness, you guys can be working up to the midnight deadline on finishing this month's class. But as soon as you do that, you have another class to go. That can be exhausting. So one of the things we like to do is to have a slightly lighter load in week four so that people could possibly finish earlier in the week. If you guys can turn in your final project on Friday or you know Saturday morning, then you give yourself the entire rest of the weekend to really have a weekend, to really have a little bit of a pace between. Uh, and that helps to get that full sale schedule uh, into your system because like, uh, you just experienced these four weeks go by in a hurry. They really do. So uh, that's the load here. That's uh, what I wanted to talk to everybody about. Uh, I think that the uh, projects I saw this week were really stunning. You know, this is a really good crew and I had a lot of uh, uh, presentations that I, I saw that were really good. Some that just needed a few fixes and so I'm expecting great things. Uh, from the final and I want to be around to help people anybody that's having any technical problems I know we had some upload bandwidth problems sometimes that's our fault uh, our server goes down sometimes it's just the internet everywhere uh, is, is acting weird for folks but uh, we'll do the best we can and anything that's a technical issue nobody gets held responsible for so if there's a problem um, that's not of your making you know don't feel like you're going to get whacked on the grading for that. We really are just grading on your efforts and your ideas. Um, so Paula asked, can we still access the recorded class in the future? Uh, actually, no, uh, two weeks in, your access to this class closes. So one thing you possibly could do is uh, uh, download the, um, the, the, the Zoom archives. Uh, another thing is to just, uh, Hang on to my um, YouTube uh, account address because all of the uh, previous uh, uh, one hour sessions are there. So if you ever needed to go back, you could find an older one. Um, let's see if there are any more classes. Hey, Daryl, do we stay together for next class or we get separated? You're going to get separated. Uh, I don't know if you guys are all aware of this, but. Um, you guys are in sections of 25, but this class itself, there were about 850 of you who started here at Full Sail this month. And so uh, you're gonna be in amongst those folks again next month, but it'll be a different combination. And in fact, uh, I've been teaching three sections this month. So uh, some of you have noticed each other and um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Discord channel or notice each other on uh, online here in the live class and you haven't seen them in your section That's because there's three different sections that are mingled together that we're talking about today uh, so um, That That reconfiguration is going to happen again next month So you'll have another 25 students that you'll get to know uh, And it's on it's going to be on you to, to any buddies that you made this month Make sure you keep those uh, email addresses or, or uh, however you want to get a hold of them and uh, you stay in contact with each other. And there are Discord channels all over Full Sail. So, you know, mine is not the only place you guys can come together and find each other if you want to stay connected with each other. Um, this week, there's a discussion board from last week that's open and it's absolutely for your use. So anybody that wants to use a discussion board please log into 3.3, it is still active. That is where we're posting our projects and that's where everybody's giving each other feedback. Um, will, will our iPads be arriving? Um, typically, people get them in the first or second week of the second month. So that means either next week or the week after you should be expecting you know, uh, a little package from FedEx. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that getting that iPad is gonna make your uh, uh, studying a lot more, easy, a lot easier and, uh, you know, a lot more uh, consistent. Uh, but it usually, it, it comes in the first or second week of the second month. 
Any more questions? Uh, wanna, these are good questions. Let's keep them going. And anybody who wants to say anything or ask any question, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. But, um, you know, we're just here to, to answer questions as long as you've got them. If not, I'm going to let you guys go. This is uh, kind of a short uh, class this week just because there was no uh, Jonathan Smith. I think my mic is already unmuted. Okay. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> hey, um, I'm just wondering, Will, for the rest of uh, at least the next class, or you might be able to shed some light on this, but will all assignments from this point, from from for every single class be due on Sunday at midnight? Uh, each department figures things out differently. Sometimes they've got a lot of stuff for you to do and they might just have one assignment that comes out on a Monday and it's due on Wednesday and then you move forward from there. Okay. Um, I think most classes have settled down that, that things open on a Monday and close on a Sunday. So you're going to find that that's the, the, the the pattern, but it just depends on how much material they need to get through or how they're working on it. So if, okay. the, if, if they need to get through things faster than that, then they'll make a tighter schedule and, and each class has the opportunity to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Anybody else have any questions? Will there be a way to track the iPads once they've shipped? Um, most likely there's somewhere you could sign up to have you uh, be messaged when things are, sh are, are on the road. And then uh, just like uh, Amazon, you could follow the package along or uh, somewhere there might be a tracking number where you can get it. And you can go to the uh, Google and, and, and do the FedEx tracking thing. How often do we have class in between, have the class in between breaks? Uh, Christopher Valdez, what do you mean by in between breaks? There are breaks built around the, the school year that you know, aren't real plentiful. Uh, we, we just had a uh, spring break uh, last month, and the summer break is gonna be during the 4th of July week. That always happens. So next month, June, goes four weeks straight without a break, and then you're gonna go into July, and then depending on what the calendar is, there's probably one week of class and then that second week will be the beginning of January where there is a, a one week that you all have off. Uh, and then um, in the fall, uh, there's a Labor Day break and there's two weeks off at Christmas. So uh, that's kind of the way things work. Uh, is it a once a week lecture in each class? Again, each class can be different. And so PYP, uh, I believe has uh, lectures with larger amounts of people in them, but they have them multiple times a week. So there might be multiple chances to catch the same lecture. Um, but uh, again, every, every department does things their own way. Um, some have several uh, uh, live classes just because it's necessary to have feedback or discussion. Um, you know, I would prefer to have more live classes, but it just, uh, in, in, in the, the material that we're covering right now, this is this has worked out at to be the best. And also, you know, um, we've tried not to be too much of a strain, this being the first week, first month for everybody. Is there a calendar for these break schedules? Yes, and I would suggest you go to the Full Sail One website and look at the uh, calendar section, and I think everything will be listed. Now, it's slightly different for online folks because you know, um, usually what happens is that this, uh, you just have two weeks to do uh, one week of, of, of work. Um, but essentially, that's considered a week off. Uh, and, and they're all tied in. So I know that whatever week that the 4th of July falls on, uh, you're going to have a week off. And I know that you're going to have the, uh, uh, the Monday off for the Labor Day and you're gonna have uh, two or three days off for Thanksgiving, and then you're gonna have two weeks off for Christmas. And then there's always a spring break, which moves around, and sometimes it's in March, sometimes it's in April. Uh, uh, but again, don't, uh, 
don't rely on my memory. Let's go look it up. It's at full sail one. I'm sure you'll be able to find that out. Uh, you guys have more questions? These are all good questions. Keep them coming. All right, well, I'm gonna let you guys go then. Uh, there's no reason for me to hang long, but I'm gonna be around all week. So anybody that, again, uh, wants more clarification, wants a little more feedback, or uh, if I was asking for something and, and, and you wanna supply that, uh, and those of you that are still uh, working on uh, getting some past assignments into me, I'm around, I'm gonna be available. So uh, don't uh, hesitate to get a hold of me. I'm uh, really proud of this group. You guys have done a lot of really good work, and I think you're very, serious students and I think most of you are really going to go far here at Full Sail. This is a, uh, a class that I'm going to remember for a while. So thank you guys and I want you to have uh, a great week and a great rest of your time here at Full Sail. I've been happy to be your teacher and, and I'm happy to, to, to move you on into the future. Thanks guys. <laughs>